Welcome to She Rebel Radio, the podcast for high-performing women leaders who want to unlearn conventional rules, leave prestigious careers, and launch businesses of significance. Each week, She Rebel Radio brings you insights and advice from women entrepreneurs who transformed their prestige prisons into daring entrepreneurial success stories. Now, here is your host, Lulu Nins. Welcome to episode 21 of She Rebel Radio. Start 2020 with intention and end 2019 with gratitude. Welcome, welcome. It is Friday the 13th. We are post elections here in the UK. And if you're anything like me, I had an intention of more meditation and less elections this week to preserve my energy. And of course, I voted for women. We've only had the vote for the last 100 years. It's really important that we step up and vote, but I couldn't deal with all the ranting and raving on social media. So have definitely given myself the space this week to tune in and do what's important and stay grounded with my intentions instead of getting caught up in the drama. So it is also Friday the 13th, ladies, and that is an unlucky day for some, but not for the goddesses in the house, not for the she-rebels, as it is a myth that Friday the 13th is unlucky. The number 13 is in fact really powerful for women. We have 13 cycles every year and we have 13 cycles of the moon as well. So I always see it as a massively lucky day for She Rebels and not a negative one. So I come to you live with the last solo show of 2019. We have an amazing guest for you in episode 22. So do tune in with that next week and then we'll be back in the new year. But I wanted to create a really helpful episode for you to move into the new decade, into 2020 and to have your most transformational year yet. So we're going to kick off episode 21 with start with intentions and ending with gratitude. And that is exactly what I'm going to do on this episode is to start with intention, with my intention for you to create a really powerful podcast episode where you can move gracefully into 2020 and really allow your intentions to unfold. If you're anything like me, they tend to really unfold around the springtime, around the spring equinox, which point to note, I'm hosting an amazing retreat with Gems Yoga, the Space and Significance Retreat. We have a handful of spaces left at the Spring Equinox, so I will post the link in the show notes or do contact me separately in respect of that because we would love to have you there with those unfolding intentions. So we're going to talk about what intentions are, why they are so important, why they are actually also very feminine in nature. Then we are going to move to business goals you know, intentions versus business goals, intentions versus those New Year's resolutions, intentions versus giving your attention to something and how that all fits in together. And then we're going to close this episode with some gratitude and why that is also important for you to connect back with those important intentions. So really importantly, I reason why I actually said to a client on a call, start with intentions, end with gratitude. And then I said, I was going to say hashtag then I'm far too old for that, but I was going to say, (laughs) um, then I was like, I need to do a podcast episode on this. And I remembered in my members group, the Rebel Heart Club Mastermind, that my clients from last year, it was only around this time last year, we were in Goa setting really powerful intentions. I was working with my clients on setting really powerful intentions for the year ahead on a beach in Goa at the amazing Ashiana Yoga Retreat. And my clients was sharing in the members group only a few months ago how much has changed for them, how much has shifted. They were found their Goa notebooks, um, some beautiful notebooks that I bought for them specifically to keep that 
those intentions in a separate place so they could go back and revisit that. And they were sharing comments of so much has shifted. I'm a different person. My business vision is so different. This is so powerful. And that is because we really took the time. I took the time to share those softer, more feminine intention settings with my clients. And it's so important that you start the day with intentions, the year with intentions, the month with intentions, and particularly when you're in a process of transformation. You are leaving or you're in the process or you have left that prestigious position and starting that business of significance. Intentions are really what sets the course for you. They're really what allows the space for growth, for receptivity, for flow, for co-creation. They are directional in, in pointing to the outcome in that you can't separate the cause and the effect from intentions and really understanding that your intentions have a knock on effect to everything and wait for next week's episode because we're talking about ecosystems and how that cause and effect is so important for us to tune in with which you know including the past episode we were talking about you know profit-led businesses versus purpose-led businesses and this is a massive part of what's been lacking a lack of real strong intention which Oprah does nothing without setting intentions by the way and it's a real filter for the decisions and and the actions that you will take you always go back to that intention and when you take the time to set intentions it's almost subconsciously you 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 kind of magically get to that destination. And one of my clients said to me this year, who was with me in Goa and worked with me again this year, I can't believe this actually works. And she can't believe it actually works because she's used to setting strict business goals. Strict business goals, but intentions, softer intentions, when you're in a period of transformation are crucial versus the strict business goals. And Oprah actually says that she, it cured her of people pleasing because it really acts as a filter, as I said, for those decisions and those actions that you are going to take and the hell yeses versus the hell noes. But if you don't know what your intentions are, if you don't take the time and space to set them, then you end up doing all the things. And as I said here, why I say it's very feminine in nature is that there is a degree of receptivity that you need to receive and co-create with intentions. You're not in control of every little aspect and it allows a degree of openness for things to unfold. Versus, and let's dive into this here, the strict business goals. And so often I see and I know clients when they come to me have worked with previous mentors, coaches, and they've had all these strict business goals. They've had all the systems and structures, the how to's, which are not working because they are in a period of transformation. And what happens is massive frustration, massive comparison, massive you know, seeking approval and not receiving it, feeling really crap about themselves from being this really successful, high, prestigious woman to really not being able to achieve some relatively simple business goals. Now, I had two businesses before my coaching business in its current form. I've made these mistakes, ladies. This is why I do what I do. This is why I help women who are really used to having that degree of control, that level of achievement, that rigid, measurable sales goals. Um, What did we used to call it? God, it's been so long now. I left the legal profession five years, but are, you know, fee earning targets, which I never used to actually check in all honesty, but I was always way above it because I really focused on my intention of serving the clients to the highest degree, but I had a lot of masculine energy as well. So those, you know, rigid business goals, it's not that they don't have their space in your business, they absolutely do, but they require effort over ease and they are very masculine in nature and they require a lot of the how-tos, which when you're in transformation, you may not know. You may have started with the wrong business. Where you start is likely not where you end up. So those softer intentions really allow that space for transformation. When you set strict business goals, what happens is you block the flow and the unfolding 
in all the ways that your mind thinks things need to be and you do not allow yourself to be met and allow things to unfold. So there is a degree, a massive degree of receptivity, particularly for women in business. That's what this podcast is all about because we are creating and stepping into creating things that don't even exist yet. And there is a degree of surrender and receptivity that you really need to be able to create to really step into your authentic power, as it were. We also know about resolutions. January is coming. The yoga studios fill back up. I get ratty about it um, because I will start a new habit at the end of the year, usually October, November rather than in January because I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan of January and February. So I definitely don't want to be forcing myself to create new habits. My energy tends to be a little bit lower. I'm definitely a spring, summer and even autumn, but winter I really do need a degree of hibernation. And those resolutions take determination, um, a degree of resolve, purpose, which is all great. My level of determination is not as high in January, February. I've learned that moving into year six of my business. And resolutions also really are clouded in a degree of lack things that you must not do, things that you need to stop doing. You need to stop doing the job. You need to leave. You need to stop drinking wine. You need to stop eating chocolate. And what often we do is we don't concentrate on the positive thing that you are going to replace it with. So resolutions are clouded in lack, not good when you are creating a new arena for yourself and a business of significance. So my advice would be stay away from the resolutions full stop set intentions and you can have the business goals underneath that. A degree, you know, what would be the business goal that would attach to the intention that would be measurable that you know that you've got there, but really be unattached to the outcome when you're in that period of transformation. Then you need to give that thing your attention with an A, attention with an A, and attention energizes something. And we are very good coming from corporate, giving our attention to all the things, all the things that need to get done. And we can make our, you know, business goals and things about a to-do list instead of who it is that you're wanting to be and stepping into being. It's about all the things that you are doing and giving your attention to. And we are human beings, not human doings. And actually computers and technology is taking over a lot of the doing. So it's really important and more important that you start stepping into the being. It's not that you don't need attention. You need to put attention on your intentions, but it becomes easier the stronger those intentions are. And it's Deepak Chopra who says intention transforms, attention energizes. And what he means by that is whether you're giving something your attention, whether it's negative attention you're giving it or positive attention, you spotlight it, particularly if it's negative attention. You can't create the clients, the thing's not happening. You spotlight the problem, which means you energize it and you energize it and the problem gets bigger and bigger. Whereas when you give something positive attention, you become more more solution-based and solution-focused. So it definitely needs your attention and the focus, etc. But it's not about just giving various things. If you give various things your attention without intention, nothing changes, nothing transforms. You tend to hit your default button every step of the way. So a great way to think of intentions is almost like your why behind what it is that you're doing. And as I said at the beginning of this podcast, then it acts as a real filter for the decisions and actions or non-actions that you are going to take. So some journaling prompts for you to really have a play around with over the Christmas period, over January, I'm going to give you three prompts to really start to move into what softer intentions look like. So number one is to establish myself as. So number one is to establish myself as and just see what comes out, just journal. Because again, intentions really have to be from a deep heart space, from an embodied space, not from your head and what you think it is that you should be doing. So to establish myself as what really lights you up and excites you. Number two is to be open to. So in 2020, what are you going to be open to? And number three, to make changes to. So to establish myself as, to be open to, 
to make changes because this is all about the period of transformation and just have a play around with what comes up for you. As promised with this episode, which is named Start With Intentions and End With Gratitude, I want to end this episode by telling you why gratitude is so important. And I quite often joke that I kind of poo-pooed it when I first broke out into my first business because I was like, of course I'm grateful for things. I didn't really see how it would change that much for me. But it is so important because, as I said, it actually spots light, spotlights you in the positive instead of the negative. As a defence lawyer, I was trained to look for the worst case scenario in so many things and not good at being present because as a lawyer, you are, you know, looking at what your client's done in the past, trying to predict the future and, you know, really spotlighting in the problems because you're there to solve problems. So I really got into the habit of gratitude. There is you know, express that gratitude first thing in the morning, which is really powerful for me. It's always been more powerful in the evenings. I'm much better at really getting on with my intentions for the day in the morning. And then in the evenings, really focusing on the gratitude, just three things that you are grateful for that day and writing it down. It's important for so many reasons. Firstly, as I said that versus spotlighting on the problem, if something negative and in inverted commas has happened that day or something that's annoyed me or the business hasn't quite gone as I wanted or on a personal level, I can focus on that one thing. That is the art of spotlighting. It magnifies and grows because I'm giving it all that negative attention. So when I do gratitude, it really tunes me back and with all the amazing things that have happened that day. When I just write down three, I end up writing down 10. And why that ties into your intentions is that gets you back into alignment and flow for your intentions and that co-creation and that receptivity, which you can be blocking if you are spotlighting and focusing on negative things. And when we think about the calendar year, you know, we start January with resolutions. I'm asking you to replace those with intentions. And certainly in America and Canada, they end it with Thanksgiving. We don't do that here in the UK. It would probably be a good thing if maybe we did. I certainly use the end of the year as a massive period of reflection in reflecting on what my intentions were at the beginning of the year, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And I can tell you now when things haven't worked is because I haven't been in full alignment with those intentions or the way that I have written it or, you know, kind of tuned in with it. I've been blocking something. I realise actually I've been too rigid in how I have worded that. So intentions, you can really go deeper and deeper with them. And gratitude is key to finding yourself in alignment with them and tuning in with them from a real embodied and heart space and feminine space. So I wanted to end this episode with a little bit of gratitude for all of the downloads we've had of the She Rebel Radio podcast. It's been, you know, something really tied into my intentions at the beginning of 2019 to establish myself as and it really acted as a filter for the decision to really get this out there and I was going to do that at the beginning of 2019 it didn't kind of work out and then I just found myself in the right place at the right time with the right people to get me out there and doing it and it helped me really make risky decisions within my business that I do year on and year out if it ties into my intentions I know that it's the right decision for me and then the flow will come from there the growth will come from there and I need to be receptive to the people the places the things that are going to come in to help me move forward and my massive intention um, or rigid goal behind my intention initial intention of creating amazing free content for those women leaving prestigious positions and starting businesses of significance to create content that didn't exist in the form that I needed it to five years ago. My, you know, big rigid business goal behind that is to achieve over a thousand downloads by New Year's Eve. I've even put it out there in total resolution style, that if there are not a thousand downloads, Lulu is not having any Prosecco 
on New Year's Eve or any anything else I might add any other wine which makes me sad so I'm <laughs> attaching it to a total resolution so I would love your help in going on my social media posts I'm going to post those underneath on my business page on Facebook on LinkedIn on my Instagram to share and tag someone who you would you you know would love She Rebel Radio as much as you do and once we receive those 1,000 downloads, which is going to happen because I am going to be, I'm visualising, right, myself drinking that Prosecco on New Year's Eve, feeling really excited that I've really created that foundation for She Rebel Radio. I am going to give away a three-hour coaching intensive at the beginning of 2020. I'm just going to pick a random name out of the hat to one of you amazing women who shared the She Rebel radio mission and we will really ground in and set such deep intentions for your transformational year ahead and believe me this is a such a powerful process that as I've said remembering what my clients have said to Goa I've had so many shifts I'm such a different person Um, My business vision has come on so much because what I will help you with is really having that period of transformation, which is what is needed before you set those rigid, rigid business goals, which might be what you've been doing so far and it hasn't really got you anywhere. So do jump onto my social media. I'm super excited to you know, really dive into my intention for December and, you know, attached to that is the, the, the rigid goal is my attention. And I've even chucked a resolution in there as well. No wine if that goal is not achieved, which is totally going to be. So I am cool with it. A big love from me. Have an amazing rest of the day and do tune in next week for episode 22. We've got an amazing episode coming up for you and I will see you back on the solo shows in 2020. Thanks for listening to She Rebel Radio, the podcast for high-performing women leaders who want to unlearn conventional rules, leave prestigious careers, and launch businesses of significance. She Rebel Radio is executive produced and hosted by women's advocate and coach, Lulu Mintz. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. You can find Lulu Mins on Facebook and LinkedIn at Lulu Mins and on Instagram at Lulu Mins underscore biz. Until next week, keep rebelling against the rules and designing success your way.